What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now and today we're going to talk about off-grid living in Arizona, what you need to know and also where the best places are to actually live and do off-grid living in Arizona. Arizona is a diverse state. We have desert, we have high desert, and then we have alpine country and we also have forest. Uh, one of the things you're going to run into when you're dealing with uh, living off-grid in Arizona really is water. So let's go ahead and dive in here and take a look at off-grid living in Arizona. If you're new to living in Arizona, you can catch up with us on Instagram, living in Arizona now, or you can also watch us on YouTube with many of the videos that we've created previously. So let's go ahead and talk about this. I will be checking the comments. So if living off-grid in Arizona is something you've considered, uh, definitely drop a comment and we'll try to answer it during this live stream. Or if the live stream is completed and you're watching afterwards, please do uh, ask those questions. So let's go ahead and get into this and talk about some of the things you need to know. Number one, people always want to know, can I harvest rainwater in Arizona? So uh, rainwater harvesting is a big thing in Arizona because there are some laws that you need to know. So you need to brush up on those laws when you do look into harvesting rainwater. So there's two ways you're gonna get water in Arizona. This is gonna be your biggest challenge in particular in the great state of Arizona is the uh, well. So can you get groundwater with a well? When I was going to do uh, offshore or um, off-grid living, I was going to actually dig a well. I was, I'll show you where I was going to do that. That meant I was gonna have to pay around seven to $10,000 to have someone come out and dig a well and that was on the cheap end so uh, the other thing is catching rainwater but because Arizona is not a state known for a lot of rainwater especially in the deserts uh, you know you probably want to double down and do a well and rainwater catchment but let's talk about rainwater catchment a little bit more in detail basically you need a potable uh, tank like this you can see these tanks this is on the University of Arizona website uh, but tanks like this usually look like something, uh, these are actually really small. The rainwater catchment that I had in Hawaii was a much bigger tank than this. You would probably not want to get it on Amazon. Although I will put a link to some of these products in the description. You can browse through the prepper store, but a lot of the heavy duty stuff you're going to want to get uh, somewhere else, not on Amazon. So I see you guys tuning in. Miss McGee, uh, Twistina, Drunken Chef, what's going on? I haven't seen you in a while. And then Jeff S. and Mossy. Someone says, look, so there, yeah, a lot of people have been looking into off-grid living. The thing is, it's I, as someone who lived off-grid for three months, it's, it's not all uh, glamorous glory, you know, but it can be done. It's just not as easy as people think. But rainwater catchment and a well, probably the way you want to go, you want to double down. You want to be getting the rainwater and you want to be getting the uh, well going. And probably having big storage tanks is the way you would go. Uh, I would say less is probably the benefit, or more than less. So the more rainwater you're able to capture and collect, especially during a big monsoon where it just totally dumps. But again, there are guidelines that you have to follow. So in the state of Arizona, it is legal to collect rainwater, collect any rainwater that falls on your property for future use. Rainwater can be harvested in rain barrels or cistern systems that funnel rooftop runoff to water collection tanks so the water must actually originate on the property you have to pay attention to that so typically what people do is they put those gutters or those rain gutters on the side of the house and that pours into the water catchment but water catchment you're gonna it's a science and you can't just start catching water and drinking it because it's not that easy you have to like maintain it and make sure it's healthy to drink Another thing that people have to consider when they live off grid is propane. Propane is the most commonly used resource that people use for heating, for appliances, or even to stay warm in the wintertime. Because yes, even in the desert, it does get cold. So propane, <laughs> they say the dirty little secret of living off grid. So propane systems, I'm not going to get too much into this, but propane can be a pain in the butt. And the larger the propane system, the better off you're going to be. A lot of people, when they go into it, they tend to do a little bit more than they need because it's better to be safe than sorry, if you know what I'm saying. So keep that in mind uh, when you're considering living off grid and how are you going to power your appliances. By the way, who you all got in the Super Bowl today? I see somebody. Uh, I, I know some of you guys are big on the Rams. Rams are from Los Angeles. They're like a big rival for Arizona. Okay. Anyway, so I the other thing that makes Arizona so interesting is it's 
solar power. So Arizona, Phoenix, Phoenix in particular, one of the best cities in all the country for solar power. I mean, we are the Valley of the Sun. What does solar power run off of? Sunshine. So uh, Phoenix is one of the top shining cities, according to an annual report that measures solar power use in the United States Environment America. So Phoenix is the fourth city with the most solar voltaic, but I think they say that we collect the most UV rays out here. So in Arizona, you're going to have lots of opportunity to, to collect the actual solar power, the sun's uh, power, but how are you going to store it? So storage is always the main problem. It's how do you get the battery power for the storage to actually hold uh, we don't typically get many days consecutively that are going to be overcast. So that's one of the good things about Arizona is you're not going to get like a week straight. Uh, and if it does happen, it's very rare where you get a week straight of just overcast. It's not like that here. Uh, we get overcast maybe two or three days and then we're back to sunshine like today. It's uh, February. Uh, the wasted management, <laughs> not wasted management, waste management open is going on. And uh, it's just... Total blue skies, not a cloud in the sky the whole tournament. So this is February and lots of sunshine out here in Phoenix. People who come out here, they love these the 80 degrees in, in February and they're just amazed by it because they're like, this is great. It's snowing where they're at. I don't know where you guys are tuning in from, but yeah, it's definitely a great place to live uh, for sunshine in particular uh, for winter and spring and a little bit of late fall, but after that, it's just way too hot. <laughs> so anyways, so let's start talking about some of the other things you need to know about off-grid living, and that's what we're gonna dial in right now. I see you guys uh, saying that you guys are uh, looking at the interest rates. Yeah, the interest rates are climbing up. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, we expected that, right? That was that was kinda, that was kinda obvious it was gonna happen, and it was just a matter of when, right? Um, so another thing that you're gonna wanna consider is uh, your sanitation. How are you going to do your septic tank? You know, a lot of people, they, they, they do a big tank and then uh, they do these systems where the actual liquid <laughs> waste actually leaches into the ground. Now, you have to check all guidelines and laws and zoning requirements and all these different things where you're going to do this at. But when it leaches into the ground, you have to be aware of, uh, you know, is there any guidelines? Because that stuff can leak into the actual water table. So sewage is going to be a big thing. You know, you have gray water sewage uh, and, and there's other different types of uh, sewer, sewage. I mean, like I said, out here in Arizona, we do water treatment, which is water recycling. You can see they do gray water recycling products uh, that are available for uh, people who are living off grid. But then you have black water sewage in off grid living. So you got to know more about the septic tanks, the cesspools, the cesspits, the se septic tank system. Uh, what kind of tank do you need? How do you get it to uh leach the the uh liquid waste lots of things to consider with that but most of you who are probably into living off grid already know about most of this because you wouldn't be uh trying to get that aggressive with living off grid unless you knew about those four things that i just touched on but uh let's talk about some other things you know we just talked about rainwater harvesting uh if you want if you're looking for properties one of the places you can go arizona real estate.com off grid It'll tell you about some of the properties they have around Seligman and Hillside, but we're really going to touch on some more of the uh, the other places that you can consider. But I do want to talk about prefab homes. So these homes that are prefabricated, uh, a lot of people uh, get these small, tiny homes for fifty thousand, sometimes forty thousand, depending on how much it costs for the prefab. Usually small units. Sometimes they're made out of shipping containers. Sometimes they're not. Uh, they can pre-assemble them or they can assemble them on spot, but they're usually up in like three days. This is usually a good starter kit, uh, just getting something going on your property if you bought an acre or two acres in Arizona. By the way, we are going to talk about the places that it is best to do that, um, but just let me finish doing what I'm doing here. I know you guys are kind of curious where to do this. Okay, so someone said Rams. Who else you guys got? You guys got Rams or you got uh, Bengals? Oh, you guys were talking about <laughs> Someone said the uh, the wasted management. That's the nickname for the waste management open is wasted management because people at 11 o'clock in the morning, they're getting hammered out there at the golf open. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back on subject of the off grid for now. And then uh, we won't talk about too much of the Super Bowl, but that's about to happen anyway by the time people watch this. OK, so where are the best places to actually do off grid living? So if you zoom out here, you got Arizona. 
I'll show you the first place that I was going to do off grid. It was out there by the Verde Valley. So it was this little area right here called Rimrock. This is the area that I was thinking was a good area because you could get uh, nice land in a pretty remote area. You could see they've carved out the, the road, but there's nothing out there. Uh, no real roads across the creek here, the, clear, the creek right there, Beaver Creek. Um, but over on this side of the highway, or on this side of the river, there's the highway, I-17. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's basically well. You got to use a well. But thankfully, you're next to a river, so there should be some sort of groundwater access. But in this area, you know, you're not going to be able to do much water catchment. And when you do get opportunity to do water catchment, you got to make sure that the, zo the zoning requirements and the law says that you can do it. So you got to check the law. Remember, you, ha you can only catch the water that is on your property. Like we talked about with the University of Arizona saying you can do it, but it, the water has to originate on your property. That's the big thing. You can't like tap into the river and start siphoning off the river and saying, hey, it, you know, <laughs> here's a pipe. You know, you, I mean, I guess I don't know, you know, obviously in a grid down situation where the whole world's complaining or the whole grid's down. I mean, you know, maybe in a lawless society, people would do that. But people people consider those things like if the world went to. Heck in a handbasket, if you want to call it that. I can't use the word H-E double hockey sticks because, uh, you know, YouTube. <laughs> but you guys get the idea, you know. So maybe living next to a, a stream or a river in a, in a terrible situation where, you know, all H-E double hockey sticks is broke out on the, on the streets, that might be the situation to consider as being next to a river. That was some of the things that I was considering, like being close to a stream or a river where there was flowing water. It, obviously, if you're in a place like, way out here where there's no running water and you can't really catch water and all this stuff, uh, maybe not the best best deal. But typically off-grid living means that you're not connected to any sort of public utility. No water, no electric, no septic, no sewage, which is septic. Uh, so things to consider about that. Uh, also, another area that I would say you could check out if you really wanted to get off-grid, but it's going to be cold up here, so do keep that in mind in the Bradshaws, this Bradshaw Mountains right here, along the Senator Highway, you could do some serious off-grid living. So for those of you looking for property, you'd look around the Bradshaws. Another area that I was checking out for property, because yes, I have checked out uh, just having a piece of property in some of these areas uh, where you know the prices were fair. Uh, another area is this Heber Overguard. So this whole little area right here is just starting to come down off the, the Mogollon Rim backside. Uh, you can see where the green starts to turn into high desert. And again, it does get very brisk cold up here. And it and the wind is probably the worst part about the cold. But Heber Overguard in that area, it seemed like just outside of Heber Overguard, there were some nice places. Another place you could consider is Snowflake. I know a lot of you guys tuned into this film because you guys were trying to see where the best places are while well, I'm giving them to you now. <laughs> I wanted to wait for more people to come on before I started dropping the places where you could do the off, off grid. But Snowflake right here, you could see, here's a little tributary, obviously being close to water, but you can't pull water off of that in um, normal law legal circumstances, right? Like you just can't do it because the water has to originate on your, on your property in order for you to pull it. But in a grid down, doomsday type situation where the world's going going down and you know you're just trying to survive yeah being next to a river where you can actually bathe i mean bathing is a, is a thing right you know um especially in a drought and you know but for the most part rainwater catchment and well you're going to want to be pulling off that some people think that they're going to be more prepared in a situation where society is crumbling because some people think that uh you know in that situation you would want to be near a water stream or resource there's a lot of streams out here by hebrew overguard by the way um they're a bit dry but they're we call them creeks but even if you went over here more towards like 89a you could see even on google maps there's a lot right up here uh, these little streams right the chevalon stream chevalon creek uh, it just up here it's going to get cold it's like 7,000 feet elevation 6,000 feet elevation so keep that in mind uh, another area that it seemed to catch my attention was like around Happy Jack. I don't know if you guys have ever been up to Happy Jack, but you could consider that. Thanks to the 41 people who crushed the likes. I forgot to ask everyone to hit the likes, but uh, it looks like 41 of you did it anyway. So thank you to that. Thank you to you guys. Now, if you talked about living off grid in southern Arizona, I would say check around this area of uh, Sonoida right here. Uh, 
kind of kind of off the mountain right here where Mount Wrightson is because there there is going to be tributaries that are going to pour down water and give you an opportunity to get water in a in a real desperate situation. Um, obviously, what people do when their water tank runs out and and they're in a pinch and we're in a drought and it hasn't rained and the well's not producing water and the water catchment's not producing water, they just call in a water truck. But that's why it's going to be so important to have big tanks on hand so you just fill up that tank. Uh, sometimes even having a backup tank that's buried under the ground, again, check the laws, making sure that's all correct and that you could do that. But having a big, uh, you know, 200 gallon tank buried under the ground uh, for an extra backup, backup uh, water source, right? A lot of people don't realize this about uh, pools, but pools can serve as a backup water source. You know, like if we were in a grid down situation, you just put a tarp over the pool or the jacuzzi or whatever you have, and you can actually use that as a water uh, backup resource to at least get you by. But you know, you have chlorine in it, so you have to pay attention to how to filter that out. But I'm giving ideas. I'm not telling you how to actually do it because there is a safe and sanitary way to do all these things. So always do your own research. <laughs> you can't just start drinking uh, pool water, uh, especially if it's been treated with chlorine. Uh, so keep that in mind, please. <laughs> Um, Jorge says, it doesn't sound like practical living for the elderly. No, it's really not. I mean, you can only imagine how homesteaders would do it back when they were settling uh, the West, how they would have done it, especially as they got into their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Some of them even got to the 90s. How did they do it uh, out on the prairie or wherever they're at? Uh, you know, like a lot of Arizona was settled by people who were coming in to hostile territory where they were not wanted because the indigenous people were like, hey, who are you guys coming in to take this land? So they were dealing with a lot of different challenges that this generation of people have no concept or no understanding of how crazy it would have had to have been back then. So I see Drunken Chef says, let's smash that like, everybody. <laughs> he said, everybody smash the like. Thanks, man. So who you guys got? You guys got the... Uh, you guys, who, who you guys got for Bengals or Rams? Susan says, stop populating our state for clicks and views. Well, Susan, the thing that I've realized is that people are moving to Arizona, whether this channel's there or not. So <laughs> I know, I know what you're saying though. I mean, I drive on the streets too, where there's a lot of people on the streets, but uh, ultimately people are going to move wherever they want. It's a free country. It's called the United States and people come and go where they want. And uh, I was born and raised in Phoenix, and all my life, Phoenix has done nothing but grow. So, and trust me, when I was a six-year-old kid, I was not making YouTube videos, and people were still moving here. So, I understand what you're saying, though, Susan. There is a lot of people on the streets, in Phoenix in particular, and it's, <laughs> it's crazy how many are out there. But hey, people want to know information, so that's our job, is to get the information out there. And to the people who were born and raised in Phoenix or Arizona in general, you already know that Arizona has done nothing but grow the whole time. It's one of the fastest growing states for like the last 50 years. Rams. You guys think Rams. Okay. <clears throat> Mike says, um, is Casa Grande a decent city to live in? Kind of want to live between Tucson and Phoenix. I get the idea between living in Phoenix and Tucson. That's a good idea. But... Uh, I wouldn't say Casa Grande is that great of a place. It's really hot, especially in the summertime. It's a popular place in the winter and the colder months, but as it gets hotter, it really becomes kind of intolerable. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to make this quick video about living off grid in Arizona. Thanks to everyone who commented and liked the video. Hope this helps some people looking for areas to live, like I said, around the Verde Valley, uh, especially Rimrock, uh, some areas around Heber Overgard, St. John's is another place. Snowflake is a place that uh, I, I recommended. And then obviously some people are considering moving up towards like Seligman or Ash Fork or Williams. That's another area people are going to. There's a lot of uh, land out there to kind of, you don't, I don't know if you want to be buried in the forest out here in Arizona, but the other place was the Bradshaw Mountains. There's, I mean, this is nobody really up there. <laughs> so anyways, thanks to everyone who watched and hit the likes and we'll see you guys on the next one.